Welcome to the tutorial creating a multiplane. So one of the most exciting features of both Animate and Animate Pro is the ability to create a multiplane. And what this means is taking elements from your project scene and staggering them along the z-axis so that they're at different depths. And then taking your camera and moving along the z-axis giving the illusion of 3D in your animation project. So to begin what we need to do is open both the top and the side views. So let's open the top view in the first window and then grab the side view as well. So I'm going to take the side view and pull it out actually and then try to put it in between the two views like that. So that looks about even and then behind the camera view I'm going to open the perspective view. So in the top view and the side view we can see the camera cone. Obviously from the top view we're looking at it from a bird's eye perspective and from the side view we're looking at it from the side. Then for both views you have a list of the different drawing elements that exist in your scene. So we have the sky, the mountains, um, the door, etc, the dojo, and you can see as I click on them they are highlighted in this fuchsia color both in the camera view as well as in the side and in the top view. Right now everything looks like a black line because everything is aligned on the same plane. They haven't been spread out yet along the z-axis and the z-axis in both cases is this white line here and this white line here. Um, and in case you're wondering where the thumbnails are, I think they're just, yeah, you have to scroll. These are all the Karate Rapid body parts. And there we go, those are the elements for the background in our scene. So then if we go to the perspective view, I'm actually just going to expand this window a bit. Um, you can use the keyboard shortcut Option Command on Mac, or I believe it's Alt plus Control and Windows to rotate your plane. So you can see you truly are in a 3D perspective. And let me zoom out a little bit too. You can also bring up this tool that I used by holding down Option Command by going under the hand here and selecting Rotate View. So that's what this is that we see here. So these three different colored circles each represent a different plane, so the X, Y, and Z plane. And this little navigator in the corner is exactly that. It shows you what your rotation is like in relation to your zero, zero origin point. The grid that you see here is also there to help orient you as you perform these rotations. If you want to reset your rotation, you can click on this icon here to reset. And then if you want to reset the pan, zoom, and the rotation, you can click on this button here that's Reset View. You can also use the keyboard shortcut Shift-M to reset all. Um, the other icon here is the Show Hide Camera, and that's only applicable when you actually have a trajectory from having keyframed and moved your camera along the multiplane. Um, what you see here is the perspective that you're at, so you can zoom in, or you can zoom out or you can fit to view, whatever you like. Um, the name here shows you which of the elements are selected. So in this case, it's the dojo. This shows you which tool is selected. In this case, it's the rotate view. This tells you which frame you're on, which is frame one. And then if your cursor is somewhere in the camera view, this, these numbers here that show up are giving the um, cardinal coordinates of your cursor. So when creating a multiplane, you have to keep certain things in mind. Um, first of all, when you look at something through the camera view, people experience something called the parallax effect, and that's the illusion of things that are farther away from the camera moving slower while things closer to the camera are moving faster. Um, also, even though some things will get cropped, such as these mountains, by other objects or hidden from the camera, it's good to draw complete objects because you never know when they'll be seen in the camera as the camera moves along the plane. So let's, uh, let's collapse this window again and let's move our elements. Um, you can use several different tools to move your elements. Most of them can be found here in the advanced animation toolbar. If you'd like something to say the same, so even though you're moving objects back and forth, uh, closer to the camera and then farther away from the camera um, 
in terms of the natural laws, you should see your objects getting larger as they come towards the camera and smaller as they move away. However, if you like how everything is set up already and you don't want them to get smaller or larger, then what you can do is use this tool here, which is called the Maintain Size tool. So let's do that, for example, with the background because we know the sky has to be moved the farthest back. So if we then pull from here, what we're doing is we're pulling our sky and you're seeing it get larger and that's because to maintain its size in the camera view it actually has to get larger as it's being pulled backwards. However if there's some element like the cartoon rabbit for example and I actually want to select the entire rabbit so instead of selecting these little body parts one by one I'm going to select it in the timeline view I actually want it to get a bit smaller this is a little bit too big for me. So I'm going to select the transform tool you can actually select the transform tool or the translation tool here up at the top um, and I just realized I should select the peg not just the group here and then if I start pulling you'll notice that the yellow bar is maintaining its size whether I bring it forward or backward in the side view but in fact in the camera view it looks like it's getting bigger or smaller and actually if I hold down the shift key while I do this I can keep it along the y-axis plane or if I'm pulling back and forth, I can keep it um, on the z-axis plane so it doesn't vary um, from left to right in its position. Like that. So now I'm just going to go through, I'm going to go back to the maintain size tool and just spread out all the different elements in the background. So I might fool around a little bit more with this, but this is the basic layout. The punching bag is much, much closer to us. Um, the Karate Rabbit is exactly on the, the zero plane, and then the dojo, its door, and the balcony are slightly staggered back with the mountains, the three mountain sets, and the background much farther back. But as I start fooling around with the camera and animating, I might realize they're a bit far, so I'll bring them back in. But for now, this is what it looks like. And if we look in the perspective view, again and we rotate we can see now that they've actually been separated onto different planes. Let's, let's zoom out a little bit as well. So you can see that there truly are multiple planes, hence the name multi-planes, with this view. Um, and one last thing just to show you, I'm just going to reset here. And then it's generally better to have the camera view probably between the camera view and the perspective, although there are almost equal I would say if this is um, reset uh, so that you can look to see what you're doing as you're moving things on these two different planes so you almost always work with at least one of these two the side of the top view with the camera view open so that's it for the tutorial setting up a multi-plane and that is actually the last video in the series scene setup